Hey there, John Ellison here. I'm an entrepreneur on a mission. And today is day five of a 30 day journey where I'm gonna step back and share little bits of what I've learned along the way from starting out in university and uh, deciding to drop out to run an e-commerce company that miserably failed because I had no idea what I was doing um, through to where I am now, many ventures later with lots of successes and failures in between and today I'm going to stop and start talking about knowledge acquisition, how I go about it, how I learn, um, and specific insights about problem definition, problem solving, and prototyping ideas for potential solutions. So I'm going to go back to a time uh, in 2009 to 2010 when I decided, you know what, I'm really fed up with studying business at a business school in New Orleans, I'm reading books about doing this stuff when I've got this e-commerce business that I'm trying to run on the side in my dorm room. It just didn't make sense to me. I felt like the best way for me to learn how to be an entrepreneur was to go out and do it. So my father uh, supported me wholeheartedly. I commend him. Uh, he's been a great example to me as a business owner and an entrepreneur my entire life. He gave me a check for $4,000 as my first investor and said, good luck, go make products, go build this thing and see what happens. Um, so along the way, I also knew that I needed to supplement my practical experience of running an e-commerce company with learning other things. So I set a goal in 2010, which was my first full year outside of formal education, that I was gonna read 10,000 pages in that year. And I uh, quickly understood that I needed to learn how to learn. I needed to learn how to read, how to acquire knowledge the most efficiently that I possibly could. And somewhere along the way, I remember seeing this cartoon that talked about uh, the best thinkers know how to think and that they actually step back and analyze their own thoughts and their own thought processes or processes. I can't figure out how to say those words now. I'm a American in the UK for so long. <laughs> Everything gets muddled up. Um, and so I learned this term metacognition and I was fascinated by this approach, but I couldn't really find any resource that talked about how to do this. And so I kind of found the next best bet, uh, which was a book by Mortimer J. Adler called How to Read a Book. And I knew that I liked reading. I didn't like watching videos. And I started reading How to Read a Book and it completely opened my eyes to how I'd only learned how to read in an elementary way, word by word, line by line, paragraph by paragraph. And he describes this feeling of enslavement and obligation as readers tread through the muck of every single page on a book from cover to cover as if they owe the book something. And Adler introduces this principle that a book should receive no more or no less time than it deserves. And actually the first stage of selecting a book and deciding whether or not to read it is a really key part of the reading process. And he describes this as an inspectional reading process where you read the front, the back cover, you look at the introduction, you skim through chapter headings, you try and identify what kind of book is this? Who is the author and what are they trying to say? What kind of structures of information are here? How much of this is story and fluff and how much, is it, how much of this is the actual good stuff that I need to read? And where are the areas that I actually care about that I want to go deep? And you're basically creating a map and a territory in your mind that you can use as a detective to dive deeper later. So that first inspectional reading process was something that I'd never done before and I started doing before I read any book and I found it really fun. And at the same time, I was also training to uh, Evelyn Wood's speed reading course to identify how can I train my eyes to track and to skim more effectively such that I'm not encumbered by the, the reading word to word that I've been trained to do since so young. And so combining these tools and these processes through all of these books that I was reading about entrepreneurship and startups and technology and code and everything gave me a route to knowledge that was more efficient and more expedient and more focused than anything that I'd had before. Because so much of my learning in school was based upon this regiment of study and then test study and then test. 
And actually the knowledge acquisition in that domain for me was very short lived because I knew I didn't really care about the test and its results because there were no real life consequences or emotions or satisfactions that came from it. I could never see somebody smile by something that I'd learned because it was just a test. But actually as an entrepreneur, the test is people, it's customers, it's vendors, it's employees, it's processes. And that's so much more alive to me. So what I found myself doing was deciding that, hey, there is this area of knowledge that I need to acquire and I'm gonna read about it and then I'm going to write and reflect and then I'm gonna apply it in a specific domain and see if I can demonstrate that I have learned it. And I later learned that this process um, was used by Richard Feynman, a physicist who was known as the great explainer. And he described the Feynman technique as the process of teaching what you think you already know to someone else. And in doing so, you identify the gaps in your understanding so that you can go back and improve how you learn and how you explain. And that actually this teaching and application process is a really integral element of my learning system that I began to apply in 2010 and have done for the last 10 years. So reading, teaching and applying what you think you've learned and then being honest with yourself about where you're falling short and seeing it as a journey has been a really powerful system that I've applied to gain knowledge to solve problems. So along this way, I also stumbled on a new method of uh, thinking about problems called design thinking. And a lot of people don't really understand what design thinking is but I had the great pleasure of working very early on in my career with a mentor called James Box at an agency called Clear Left in Brighton. And when I first walked into Clear Left, I was as green as green can be in that I had very little experience. I'd run an e-commerce company. I'd done some web design. I'd done one proper UX project for a tech startup in LA that failed (laughs) because frankly, my design wasn't great and neither was uh, the leadership, but hey, we all start somewhere. And James Box basically took a bet that he saw something in me that he could invest in, that he could build maturity as a designer and build value in the organization. And I'm pretty sure that other people in that company didn't agree with James's bet, but he was the head of UX and he made it. And James began to mentor me and tutor me every single week at Claire Left to teach me how to think about problems. And actually I realized that I was Uh, flying at these problem sets without any real understanding or articulation of the problems I was trying to solve or the specific outcomes that I wanted to achieve, either organizationally or personally. Um, And I had no nuanced understanding of the relationship between the problem, the outcomes, uh, the process, and then the specific outputs, the things that you create that you hope will result in that desired outcome. And as soon as I started to unpick all of these different elements with James's guidance, something really special started to happen because I found that actually I did have a good knack for defining problems. I had been writing every single day for many, many years. I was doing a daily blogging process at Clear Left and actually I found myself, you know, articulating problems relatively easily. And then James would force me to open my mind to the full realm of possibility in terms of what the potential solutions were that could solve the problem. And then I needed to develop sets of criteria, specific things that would help me filter those range of solutions and pick one to decide to test with real people in user research or in rapid prototyping or in customer interviews and you know usability tests. There's all these methodologies in the Design Thinkers Toolkit that you can use to test your hypothesis about what you think the best solution is for that problem which you've defined to achieve the outcome that you need to achieve. And it was this amazing liberating process working 90 days as an intern at Clear Left under James Box where I'd learned more than I'd learned in two and a half, three years on my own as a web designer, as a um, you know, half-baked UX designer, so to speak, doing things on my own. 
And it was at that time that I realized there is this really important element of having a mentor, of working with people who know way more than you do and have been around the block so many times and can help you grow because frankly, if you don't know where you need to grow, it's really hard to get there. It's a painful process. And at least that's what I found, that uh, James kind of unlocked this power in me that I didn't know was there and I couldn't have achieved without his help in the same time frame. And so um, just reflecting on the past, I think that key beginning of me dropping out of university, seeing metacognition as a discipline, understanding that I needed to figure out how to think. I needed to figure out how to learn. I needed to figure out how to read. These are really fundamental things that people don't teach you in school. Or at least they didn't teach me. They taught me how to pass tests, but they didn't teach me how to think. And that is the core of knowledge acquisition. It's the mind. And I found that really empowering. So combining that underlying foundation with design thinking, a discipline for understanding problems, for generating a wide range of solutions, for converging on a small subset of solutions and picking one candidate to test, putting it out there into the world, getting out of the building to talk to real humans and see what they think, trying to remove your own bias to get out of the way and to look at things like a scientist would to falsify your hypothesis, to be wrong. <laughs> it's a total inversion of thinking. And then having the delight as you learn what was wrong and as you hold on to that pinnacle of the process, which is learning. And you know that it's actually not about getting things right. It's about learning and iterating and improving and tightening feedback loops. But it's also about empathy. It's about feeling what other people feel. It's about knowing what your customers are going through and caring about their pain and their struggle and motivating teams to care about that struggle. And once you add these ingredients of empathy and a good discipline of design thinking, a strong foundation of knowledge acquisition, exciting things start to happen. And that's where I'm gonna take you next is seeing the fusion of all of those elements in a successful technology company in the Bay Area. Can't wait to share with you tomorrow. Thanks for staying tuned. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date. See ya.